Welcome everyone to the Penn State Blitz on Penn Live. I'm Bob Flounders, joined by Greg Pickle. It's Tuesday, Akron week. James Franklin uh, met with the media earlier today, and there was some very interesting news, Greg, with the uh, depth chart, which was also released uh, today. DeAndre Tompkins is now running first team at wide receiver in Saeed Blacknall, a, a pick for everyone to be dominant receiver. Uh, in the Big Ten, he's not. Yeah, I think that we saw something that James Franklin talked a lot about in the spring, where it's he's going to throw guys in spots that he thinks they've earned. And it's not to say Blacknell hasn't earned that spot, right. but keep in mind he had some roadblocks at the end of the 2016 season. DeAndre Tompkins didn't, and James Franklin talked a lot about his maturity as a wide receiver, also as a punt returner where he's a first-teamer. Right. I suspect we'll see plenty of Saeed Blacknell, but it was definitely a notable part of the depth chart release today. Yeah, Saeed missed the Rose Bowl due to suspension. DeAndre Tompkins was a very good player for Penn State in the first half of 2000. 16th season, averaged better than 16 yards a catch. Big moments against Maryland and against Pittsburgh. He got hurt in the Ohio State game, but it looks like he's all the way back. That wasn't the only news I thought on the depth chart. James talked about the true freshman that he yep. wants to play, and two of them showed up on the depth chart, second team and third team, at cornerback. Yeah, you're looking at Tariq Castro-Fields, the former four-star from Maryland, and also Lamont Wade, the five-star from Clarendon. And these are two guys we've heard about all summer. Wade, of course, came in early. He got here in January. Castro-Fields not until June with the rest of the freshman class. But these are two guys that clearly, at a position Penn State's recruited really well, rose to the top almost immediately. There's some older guys on the roster, Amani Oriori and a couple other ones. It'll definitely get time. Christian Campbell, of course, moves in this starting role vacated by John Reed, who we'll get to. But I think that when you look at what those two guys are able to do, you're going to see them nickel. You're going to see them in, in a lot of different packages. I think Penn State, you know, when they get out of base, they're going to bring those two guys on the field. I want you to say Amani Arawari five times One fast. more time. I dare you. And then, and then spell it, right? Uh, you alluded to it. John Reed, um, the corner of the returning starter, is not even on the depth chart. He had a knee injury in spring, uh, not expected to play. The fact that he's not even on the depth chart pretty much – seals the deal there. There, One more uh, true freshman note, the defensive end they really like, Sean Spencer really likes him. Uh, Yator Gross Matos yep. is also being targeted to play though. Greg, I, they have so many young defensive linemen, I'm not sure how he's going to fit into that rotation. Yeah, the fact that he wasn't listed on the depth chart at defensive end either of those two spots sort of tells me he might be more of a special team contributor than anything else, but I think you're going to see this more and more when they get guys at a position that they're overloaded at. Defensive end is one of them, and they think a guy has NFL potential. They're going to get him on the field any way they can early on. That way, if he is only here three years, not to look too far down the road with Gross Matos, but even if he only is here three years, you get the most out of him while he's on campus. So I thought that was a pretty interesting development for a guy that most thought would need more time to put on weight. He put it in pretty significantly early on. It wouldn't be a James Franklin press conference if we didn't ask about the quarterbacks. Right. He talked about a quarterback that has the it factor, but it probably wasn't the guy that most pe most fans would expect. He was talking about Sean Clifford, the true freshman. Yeah, I think that you know it was interesting that early on in the spring, James Franklin started worrying about his third quarterback. And you know when James Franklin really is bothered about something because of the fact that he brings it up unprompted. And he brought up the fact that they weren't sure what they had in Jake Zembic. Did they need to see some more from him before Sean Clifford got on campus? It's quite clear at this time that Sean Clifford has passed him. I still think they'll try and keep his red shirt on if at all possible. Trace McSorley and Tommy Stevens, of course, both <coughs> in front of him. But it was very interesting to learn that they thought that he was, Clifford is, was ahead of them both mentally and as a runner. I think that was two things that right. really jumped out. Yeah, and he also likes Tommy Stevens, the backup, a lot of the fans' favorite, Tommy Stevens, who yeah. uh, has really evolved, I think, as a passer. One other final note, uh, just to talk about uh, Hershey High School's Andrew Nelson, the veteran right tackle, uh, had a knee injury last year, didn't work much in the off season. He's kind of listed Greg as a co-number one at yeah. right tackle with Chaz Wright, but listening to James, it really sounds like Chaz Wright's probably going to be the guy at the start of the year, right. but he expects An Andrew Nelson's role to expand as the season kind of moves forward. It reminds you of Derek Dowry, Connor McGovern conversation a little bit. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Where Derek Dowry was the guy until Connor McGovern was ready. And it's not to say Chaz Wright won't be a guy that's used more, but I do think that when you look at the setup that Penn State has, that James Franklin was pretty clear about it. He said, Andrew Nelson is not ready yet. Brendan Mann is. That's why both two guys that missed the end of the season, one of them's playing Mann, of course, at right guard. One of them's not in Andrew Nelson. So I think that we'll see, obviously, probably him inserted into the starting lineup as soon as he gets healthy again. But Chaz Wright's a good guy to have because right. obviously health and long <clears throat> offensive line has been a question mark from time to time over the last few years. Yeah, Andrew Nelson, the starter since 2014, dealt with knee injuries. At one point, James Franklin used the word dominant right. to, to describe Andrew. That best gave me, one that of the gave best me, of the country. That gave me a little pause, but we'll see how it plays out. Uh, that's been a wrap for the Penn State Blitz, and make sure you follow us 
and Sunday's Patriot News for our Penn State Akron coverage.